Hello and welcome to the Scatterville channel. And today we're going to be covering the best CPU and GPU combos you can get going into the holiday season for 2024. I have built over a hundred different gaming PCs on my channel. And in today's video, I'm going to be gathering the best of for processors and graphics cards that I've used throughout each of those builds and combining them into individual combos, starting out from $500 and then working our way up to $2,500 and beyond. So there should be a CPU and GPU combo for anyone who's watching this video, whether you're a budget conscious PC gamer or someone who's ready to go all out for a full blown gaming PC. And this isn't just gonna cover CPUs and GPUs. I'm also gonna be covering the cost of a motherboard, of the RAM, and then the expected kind of gaming PC you can build with one of these combos, as well as their different pros and cons. So yes, I am gonna have all of the CPUs, GPUs, motherboards, and RAM kits that I talk about in this video linked in the description down below. But if you wanted to save yourself the trouble of combing through all of those links to center your next gaming PC build around one of these combos, I've got a really cool website for you. You should just go ahead and check out pcbuilds.gg. This website already has the best CPU and GPU combos from this video and entirely put together PC build lists. You're welcome to follow if you want to center your next gaming PC build around one of these computers. So honestly, if you wanted to, you could just cut to the chase, stop watching this video, hop on over to PCBuilds.gg, and not have to sit through this entire video. You're welcome to do that, or you can also watch through this entire video where I explain each of these individual CPU and GPU combos, why I recommend them. But either way, all of that can be found for you in the description below. So enough talking, let's get into the video. The Ryzen 9 9800X3D is one of the most sought out gaming CPUs right now, so much so that you may have some trouble finding it. But fortunately, you can indeed get one of these CPUs on Newegg through one of their handy motherboard combos, which is required either way if you were to say build a new PC with the 9800X3D, because you probably want an X870 motherboard along with that CPU. That said, you're gonna to wanna to keep an eye on Newegg going into this holiday season. They're usually my go-to when it comes to ordering PC components for my PC build guides on this channel, and they're definitely gonna bring it when it comes to deals. So if you're shopping for PC hardware for your first or next gaming PC this Black Friday or Summer Monday, keep an eye on Newegg. They've also got this really handy PC builder tool on their website if you wanna build a PC from scratch using their parts or even search for a pre-built gaming PC that meets your specifications through their AI search tool. So like I said, keep an eye on Newegg going into this holiday season. So with that, onto the video. Okay, first I wanna address two very popular questions that are asked a ton in these videos. So let's go ahead and clear those up right now before we get into the combos. The first question I know I'm gonna be asked is, should I like this video? And the answer is, if you're having a great day, then you don't have to like this video. I'm, I'm not gonna force you. But if you're having a bad day, I just wanna let you know, every time you like a Scatterbolt video, your day gets 0.69% better. So the like button's there if you want it. The second question I know I'm gonna be asked a lot is, will any of these combos bottleneck? And the answer is no. As a matter of fact, just about any commonly paired up CPU and GPU you're gonna to mash together for any of these combos is usually not going to bottleneck. You are only going to run into those scenarios if you intentionally pair up a very slow processor with a very fast graphics card. And I don't think anyone watching this video is gonna pair up an i3 with an RTX 4 4090. I just don't expect that. 99 out of 100 times any CPU and GPU combo you're looking into is not going to bottleneck and do not fall victim to those BS bottlenecking calculator websites you may find on Google. Those are very inaccurate and I would not recommend following those. Again, if you're playing especially at 1440p and 4k, you are not going to run into a bottleneck and rarely at 1080p will that happen. And you know what, third question, this is more of a myth, but it doesn't matter what CPU or GPU you pair up together. It's not like pairing up a certain processor with a certain graphics card is going to yield a magically better result than pairing up another processor with another kind of graphics card. This is PC hardware at the end of the day. It's not like creating magical potions in 
Skyrim. You can pair up an AMD CPU with an Intel GPU. You can pair up an Nvidia GPU with an Intel CPU. You could even pair up an Intel CPU with an AMD GPU. It doesn't matter what you pair up for a CPU and GPU combo. Again, there's a very good chance whatever CPU or GPU you're interested in putting together is going to work fine. With that, now let's get into the combos. All right, let's kick things off with the best budget CPU and GPU combos. So this is gonna be targeted for you budget conscious PC gamers who are limited to a budget, but still wanna get the most possible performance out of your CPU and GPU. And heads up, all of these for the most part are going to be designed for 1080p gaming. So at the very cheapest for a $500 gaming PC, you're gonna to wanna to go over to AliExpress and pick up a six core, six threaded CPU called the Ryzen 5 3500X. This is the best used gaming CPU you can buy under $50 that is tested and verified. Yes, you can definitely roll the dice on something used from Facebook Marketplace, eBay, or Java.gg, like a Ryzen 3000 3600, 3700X, any of those, those are fine. But if you want something that's massively available, you have the 3500X here. And in terms of performance, this is not too far off a Ryzen 5 3600. So for about $47, this is a really good CPU to look at, but otherwise just about any used Ryzen 3000 CPU on a Facebook Marketplace, Java.gg, eBay. It's gonna be a really excellent sub $50 CPU to base a very budget CPU and GPU combo around. So take one of these, pair it up with a budget B450 motherboard, like this one right here, and 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 3200 megahertz, cast latency, 18 RAM for about, what, 30 bucks? That's really cheap. Get this, this, and the 3500X, and then throw all of that together with either, if you wanna go used, a Radeon RX 5700 XT, or if you wanna go brand new, an Intel Arc A580. Now, which one should you choose between these two graphics cards? So first and foremost, like I just said, if you're comfortable with getting something used that's already been used by a previous PC gamer, 5700 XT, probably still is the best all around used graphics card to buy under $200. It just offers way too much performance for its price. And if you wanna know which of these two is faster, it's gonna be the used 5700 XT. But if you want something with a warranty that is brand new and still quite fast for about the same price of this, then a brand new Intel Arc A580 is also worth looking into. Now, the Intel Arc A580 is a newer graphics card, so if you wanted to dive a little bit into ray tracing, or if you wanted to take advantage of this built-in AV1 codec for video editing or video streaming, that's where the newness of the A580 serves to be its advantage, but if you just care about raw frame rate and performance, the 5700 XT is gonna have to be the absolute choice if you care about that. Otherwise, both of these are great options and all of this stuff combined will be great for a $500 gaming PC, which you can find one of these just like this linked in pcbuilds.gg if you wanna build a complete gaming PC centered around this budget conscious CPU and GPU combo. Now, if you wanna spend a little more by about, I'd say, $75 on something that's not only nicer, but I'd say a sizable amount faster, then this is what I recommend to build for a $600 gaming PC. Get yourself a Ryzen 5 5600, especially if you can get it from AliExpress, brand new, for about $72. That is gonna be your best bet to get easily the best budget gaming CPU, period, under $100, brand new, with a warranty. It doesn't come with a stock cooler, that's okay, you can just get any aftermarket CPU cooler of your choice. But if you wanted a traditional retail box unit, again, you can check out Newegg, Amazon, whatever is nearest to you, and that'll be about $120 USD. But then pair that up with a B550 motherboard, like this MSI one I happen to have on hand for about $90. Again, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory clocked at 3600 megahertz, like what I just showed you previously. But then for the graphics card, we can step things up a bit. You've got two options. Again, if you wanna go used, spend a little bit more and get yourself a Radeon RX 6650 XT. This is going to be faster than the previous 5700 XT that I just showed you, and it's gonna cost about $30 more. But 
This is gonna give you even more solid 1080p gaming performance, which is why I like it. And I think more so, you might find even more Radeon RX 6600 XTs than 6650 XTs. Both are gonna have about the same performance, but getting either one isn't gonna matter a whole lot. But if you wanted something brand new with a warranty, then you have the Intel Arc A750. This is probably the best value brand new graphics card under $200. And right now it's retailing for about $190, but it could very well go down in price as we get closer to the holidays. Now, in terms of relative performance, Again, kind of like what I just covered earlier, the 6650 XT is going to be the faster graphics card than the A750, but the A750 comes with some bells and whistles since it's a newer graphics card that you may like. Again, it has the AV1 codec, which is really nice for video editing, content creation, and video streaming if you wanted to look into any of that. It also is gonna perform better in ray tracing because that's a thing with these Intel Arc graphics cards over these cheaper RX 6000 cards. But if you don't care about any of that and you just want raw performance, you're gonna get the most bang for your buck getting a Radeon RX 6650 XT or 6600 XT used from java.gg, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, wherever. And all of that is going to be ideal for about, again, a $600 gaming PC, which I have fully laid out for you in my $600 gaming PC build list on pcbuilds.gg, featuring nearly all the same components I'd use for this CPU and GPU combo. Now, alternatively, if you wanted a very similar CPU and GPU combo to what I just covered, but for Intel, then what I have here is pretty much the same CPU and GPU combo with either the A750 or 6650X but pair that up with an i5-12400F. Come Black Friday and Cyber Monday, I know this CPU is gonna go on a heavy discount, so that might be worth looking into because it could be below $100, which would be a steal. In terms of relative performance, this is going to achieve nearly the same performance as the last CPU and GPU combo I just covered. It just happens to be Intel. So if you want Intel, this is a great budget CPU and GPU combo. Okay, now here are the best mainstream CPU and GPU combos. These ones are going to be great for either high frame rate 1080p gaming without any issues or worries, or if we wanted to dive into 1440p gaming while not wasting a ton of money and staying below $1,000, that's what this segment of the video is also going to cover. And if you wanted something a bit more creativity focused or perhaps AI focused, I also have that. So for the first combo, let's talk about unquestionable 1080p gaming performance. And for the CPU, Without a doubt, it's going to be the Ryzen 5 7500. Now, this is only available through AliExpress, but it is seriously recommended. In terms of CPU performance, this has the same gaming performance as a Ryzen 5 7600, but for much less. And the only difference between this CPU and the 7600 is that this doesn't come with integrated graphics, which is fine because we are looking for a gaming PC with a dedicated graphics card. It doesn't matter if we wanna use integrated graphics or not. But for about $125, this is the best budget gaming CPU under $200. I don't wanna see any other comments asking about, well, what about this CPU? What about this one? Nope not even gonna entertain those other options. This is the best CPU you can get for under $200 without a doubt. That's why we're sticking with it. Then for the motherboard, I'd say just to save a little bit on money, get a budget micro ATX B650 motherboard. I'm not gonna link this one in the description because this gigabyte board is actually kind of bad for its price, but there's plenty of others for about $140. And then for the RAM, get yourself a 32 gigabyte kit of DDR5 memory that's clocked about 6,000 megahertz with a cast latency of 30. That's recommended for these budget boards. And if you're wondering, no, we're not gonna go with 16 gigabytes because if you look at the prices of 16 gigabytes of DDR5 DDR5 RAM and 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, you can see you can get nearly double the memory for only about 10 to $20 more than what 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM is offering you. So yeah, we wanna stick it to 32. That's gonna give us the most bang for our buck for capacity. And this is going to be excellent when paired up with either a Radeon RX 6650 XT or an Intel Arc A750. These are excellent 1080p gaming graphics cards on a budget. And just like the last combo, this is gonna be kind of like the same GPUs 
processor, I mean, they are the same GPUs, but you're getting a much better CPU under the hood. That Ryzen 5 7500F is definitely gonna spool up your FPS in any esports focused PC games where there's less graphical intensity and more emphasis is placed on the CPU. And in that case, that's where that faster, newer generation Ryzen 5 7500 is definitely going to show its merits. So for a 1080p gaming PC for about $800, this is gonna offer unquestionable 1080p gaming performance. And luckily for you, I have a fully built out PCBuilds.gg link for $800 linked in the description below if you wanna reference that build for about 800 bucks for your next custom build using this combo. But now if you wanna dive into the realm of 1440p gaming, good news, you can stick it to the same CPU, motherboard, and RAM that I just discussed from the last combo. It's still going to be plenty powerful for the next GPU we're gonna cover. So if you wanna stick it to 1440p gaming, you're gonna wanna look either to the Radeon RX 6750 XT or the Radeon RX 7600 XT. So which one should you go for? So the 6750 XT is the older graphics card. It does come with 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which isn't as good as this with 16. But one thing to note is that the 6750 XT is still the faster graphics card. So if you cared about raw frame rate above all else, then that is where I'd recommend the 6750 XT. And also come Black Friday and Cyber Monday, it, this is going to be cheaper than this graphics card. But if you wanted something that's maybe just a little bit more future-proof, because this does have 16 gigabytes of VRAM, this does feature the AV1 codec, and this will have support for Radeon's next AI-based frame generation technologies through FSR4, which is something only RX 7000 can offer over RX 6000, then that is where the 7600 XT would make sense. But again, if you don't care about all the fancy bells and whistles and just want pure price to performance, that is where the 6750 XT is gonna offer you the best bang for the buck for 1440p gaming. And still, don't get it wrong, the 7600 XT is still also a fast graphics card. And yes, both of these options will be much better than the RTX 4060. That said, this is all going to be really excellent for a budget $900 gaming PC if you wanna do affordable 1440p gaming. And like I've said plenty of times, I have a completely built out pcbuilds.gg link where you can find a $900 gaming PC that is gonna be just like this. But like I said at the start of this segment, I do want to highlight one special combo that some of you guys who are watching this video may want to look into. You're maybe more than just a gamer. You're maybe a 3D artist, a 3D modeler who uses CAD software, or you're someone who's looking to do some AI stuff on the cheap, then this next combo might be for you. So pick up the i5-12600K, not the KF, because for you video editors, the K model for the i5-12600K, which will definitely get a discount on Black Friday and Cyber Monday, comes with integrated Intel HD graphics, which will not be useful for gaming, but those Intel HD graphics offer the Intel QuickSync codec, which is really awesome for video editing. So for my video editors out there, consider going Intel. But then if you wanted to, again, get into 3D modeling or AI, then the graphics card I would choose is the RTX 4060. This is still going to be all right for gaming. It can do some 1440p gaming, but mostly 1080p gaming. But being an NVIDIA graphics card, it comes with CUDA cores and AI cores. So it's gonna be useful for things more than just gaming. And this overall will be useful for about a $950 PC build. So just below $1,000. And like I said, this has more uses than just gaming. So that's why I have this combo, um, but I don't have this as a build on PC PCBuilds.gg, sorry. Okay, now for the best mid-range CPU and GPU combos. This is for all you gamers who want unquestionable 1440p gaming performance. And the higher up you go in these combos, the more performance you're gonna get. And actually, one of these combos is recommended for 4K gaming, and it's not crazy expensive. So yeah, this is where you're gonna get even more performance and still a lot of value. But heads up, if you go to the next tier above this, my high-end CPU, GPU and GPU combos, there you'll definitely get faster performance, but you'll start reaching diminishing returns for your budget. So this personally is the highest I would go for like 90% of you watching this video. So let's kick things off with my 1440p plus gaming PC combo, which uh, surprise, once again, we are going with the good old trusty Ryzen 5 
7500F. And yes, throughout these combos we'll be covering in this tier, the 7500F is still going to be plenty. This is not going to bottleneck any of the GPUs we're going to cover in this segment. It is still that fast, especially for 1440p and above, because at that point you're more GPU bound than CPU bound. So 7500 F it is. This is still the most valuable mid-range CPU you can get in 2024. Even if it costs $125, that should make you all the more happier. But now for the motherboard, we're gonna step things up a little bit. I want you to get a full-sized ATX B650 motherboard, like the one that I have linked in the description down below. This Tomahawk model that I have here is a great example because it has really excellent onboard VRMs and can handle a bit faster faster memory than the more budget B650M motherboards I covered previously. So grab yourself one of these. And then like I just said, you can get yourself slightly faster RAM for slightly more performance. So this time I want you to get 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory clocked at 6,400 megahertz with a cast latency of 32. And it's only gonna cost you about an extra five or $10 more than 6,000 megahertz cast latency 30. And once you satisfy all of those conditions, now let's get into the graphics card. And for 1440p, and I'm gonna say this is 1440p, definitely getting your money's worth, but not overspending a ton. Although this is a $1,000 PC build, snag yourself an RX 6800. It's going to go out of production at the end of this year. AMD are not going to bring it back. And for about $360, this is probably up there for top three graphics cards I get on the market. The 6800 for about $360 is absolutely a unicorn. It comes with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, pretty decent power efficiency actually for an AMD graphics card, but above all, the best 1440p gaming performance in its class. Better than the RX 7700 XT, which is another option in this price range. Yeah, you can get this one if you want. It's gonna be more expensive. It's gonna come with four gigabytes less of VRAM. And yeah, it does come with the AV1 codec and support for FSR4 when that eventually comes out. But I like VRAM. I like the 6800. Let's get it while it's here. And then when it's gone, we'll salute it. And then we can get the 7700 XT, but I'd say more, get the 6800. This is pretty much my $1,000 gaming PC build that I just made, but with an even better graphics card. So look at this for a $1,000 CPU and GPU combo. And once again, I've got a fully built PC builds on GG list in the description on how to create one of these pretty easily for a custom PC build. Now for a 1440p, no questions asked combo that will deliver you uncompromising 1440p performance if you personally felt that the last CPU and GPU combo wasn't extreme enough for you. And you're one of those PC gamers who just needs to have like 240 FPS in Fortnite, 300 FPS in Counter-Strike 2, 120 FPS in Call of Duty Black Ops 6. You just need that extra bit more frame rate because you can. <laughs> this is the combo for you. And guess what? Still stick it to the above. Still stick it to a Ryzen 5 7500F. That's still the best value CPU in this segment. Still stick it to a slightly higher end B650 motherboard with slightly higher clocked memory. But for the graphics card, you've got two options. Let's start with the obvious, the Radeon RX 7800 XT. This right now is retailing for about $470, but out of all the other graphics cards I've covered in this video, this one is most likely to go on an insane discount come Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And this is going to offer this is honestly the farthest I would go for a graphics card. I played on this exact graphics card in my $1,200 gaming PC build, and I'm like, this is it. I don't see why anyone else needs any more than this unless they want to do 4K gaming, which is why this is the last 1440p combo I'm covering in this video. Everything beyond this is going to be 4K and ray tracing only. This is it. This is AMD's best RX 7000 GPU they've released ever, other than one, which is going to be the next one. But 16 gigabytes of VRAM, a ton of hardware, plenty of performance and a decent amount of power efficiency. And if it isn't power efficient enough for you, you can undervolt it like any other graphics card I cover in this combo video. But if you felt insecure about your PC's performance and you just needed that little bit more to make you feel comfortable or a little more secure, then you got this one, the RX 
7900 GRE. This retails for about $530. This is also going to go on a discount, and this is distinctly different than the 7800 XT. The 7900 GRE is a cut down RX 7900 XT. If I'm throwing out a ton of numbers right now and you're confused, uh, I don't blame you. But again, PCBills.gg. It simplifies all of this for you. But otherwise, this is gonna offer you that extra little bit of performance, that extra little bit of a security net over the 7800 XT for only about $60 more. And in my personal opinion, you can't go wrong with either of these. If you have budget only for the 7800 XT, you are going to feel completely satisfied. But if you have budget for the 7900 GRE, then you are also gonna feel completely satisfied with this graphics card. Both of these are gonna offer uncompromising, absolute, 1440p gaming performance when paired with the CPU over here. And this is going to be ideal for a $1,200 to $1,300 gaming PC, just like the one that I have on PCBuilds.gg. Now I'm sticking to my word. That was the last 1440p CPU and GPU combo I'll be discussing in this video, because this next one is designed for 4K gaming only. You could honestly still go with the 7500F, but you're going to be spending this much on a CPU and GPU combo, you may want something with a little bit more cores. I'm going to be recommending either the Ryzen 7 7700 or the Ryzen 7 7700X. These are both eight core CPU variants. And at one point, the 7700X in particular was the fastest gaming CPU in the world at one point until another CPU came out and beat it. But either of these CPUs are honestly the farthest I would go because the only other CPU to consider beyond these two for gaming, uh, uh, spoiler alert, it's this one. And, but this costs like way more. Uh, we'll cover it later in the video, but this is the farthest I would go. But also pro tip, you can get the Ryzen 7 7700 without a CPU cooler on AliExpress for like 200 $140, which is actually a bit of a deal. So if you want to get a bit more savings for this kind of a PC, you can get a 7700 through AliExpress, which is going to offer just about the same performance as a 7700X. Of course, not as much, but still it's an option. But then for the graphics card choice, this is my 4K gaming PC budget, again, without spending tons of money. And really the best graphics card for this kind of system is going to have to be the Radeon RX 7. 7900 XT. This is a bit of a weird graphics card because on one hand, it's about $650 right now, which is very, very low for a graphics card of this caliber. It comes with 20 gigabytes of VRAM and Unlike the other two graphics cards that I covered previously, the GRE and the 7800 XT, this is not a 1440p gaming graphics card. This is a 4K gaming graphics card. This is full beans, full blown, one graphics card below Radeon's flagship. And for $650, it is about damn near $250 off MSRP. It has received the most discounts of any Radeon 7000 GPU over the years and Honestly, I don't see Radeon replacing this graphics card directly in their next generation of 8,000 uh, GPUs. It could be that Radeon doesn't make a super high-end RX 8,000 GPU this upcoming generation. So this really may be it for their like flagship GPUs for the moment. So if you wanna get in on this graphics card and deliver affordable 4K gaming, this is it. It's got 20 gigabytes of VRAM, need I say more. But the only downside is that if you're spending this much on a CPU and GPU combo, just a heads up, it'll definitely do ray tracing, just not as well as its NVIDIA counterparts, which I'll be covering in the next GPU and CPU combo. I've got a $1,600 gaming PC on PCBills.gg that is just like this, ready to go if you want an affordable 4K gaming PC. But now let's talk about ray tracing and things other than gaming. So if you wanted something that will not only do ray tracing, but also will do really well for video editing, AI, 3D modeling, all of that fun stuff. And then for the CPU, go back to Intel. Consider the i5-13600K because again, this comes with integrated Intel HD graphics, which will be very awesome for video editing because the Intel QuickSync codec that comes with those Intel HD graphics is the best hardware codec out there for specifically video editing, better than Nvidia, better than AMD. So we want this. 
And then for the GPU, because you know, if you want to do ray tracing or AI, you're going to need something with CUDA cores. And that is where the RTX 4070 Super is going to come into play. Yup, this is pretty much it. And the RTX 4070 Super is the first NVIDIA graphics card this entire video I'm perfectly comfortable recommending. It gets my seal of approval. It offers really good performance for an NVIDIA card, but better yet for those of you who are into ray tracing, 3D modeling, AI, this can do it all. And it's not obscenely overpriced. It's about $590. Just the only thing I would keep in mind is that this does come with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. And if you didn't catch it already, the other graphics cards I've been covering up until this point in this segment all come with at least 16 and go up to 20. So this graphics card is a little bit of an outlier in that respect. It needed more VRAM, but it's not that much of a deal breaker because it is under $600 going into Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And um, I don't know if I have a build for this on PCBuilds.gg. You may have to check it for me. Okay, and finally, we have the best high-end CPU and GPU combos. And I'm not gonna say these are a waste of money. All I wanna say is um, you're living the good life. If you can afford one of these CPU and GPU combos, I foresee many awesome gaming experiences ahead because if you can afford one of these, you are not gonna have to touch your computer for upgrades for a seriously long time. So let's start with the most affordable of this segment, which is going to be a 4K plus gaming PC CPU and GPU combo. So this is just below going like way too far and way too extreme. So for this CPU, I'm actually gonna have to go ahead and recommend again, either a Ryzen 7 7700X, but more importantly, a Ryzen 5 7600 X 3D. Now I don't have one in the studio to show you guys, but if you are in Europe and you can order one of these online, or if you live near a micro center in the United States, this CPU is one of the fastest CPUs of its price segment. The 7600 X 3D, even as a six core CPU, is that fast because of its X 3D it's X3D cache. So on that CPU, I think comes 96 megabytes of L3 cache, and that absolutely makes a difference in certain PC games. And it absolutely will school a Ryzen 7 7700X. So while this is the best CPU you can get if you don't live in your micro center or you don't live in Europe, if you can get your hands on a 7600X3D, that'll be an excellent CPU just below going too extreme. Then for the motherboard, um, yeah, get yourself a B650 ATX motherboard that's a bit more beefier. And what I mean by beefier, I mean get something that comes with like a 14 plus two plus two power phase design. I know this one that I'm showing right here has a 12 plus two plus two, but ignore that for now. I've got that linked in the description below. I'm gonna queue it as a B650 beefy motherboard or, you know, a B650 E motherboard that also works, like one from Asra for instance. And then for the RAM, you can keep it to the same amount because you're sticking it to a 600 series motherboard. So 6,400 megahertz with a cast latency of 32 is recommended. But for the GPU, I'm gonna recommend the RTX 4070 Ti Super. Why this graphics card? Okay, so while you can completely get a 7900 XT and be completely fine, what the 4070 Ti Super offers you that that Radeon card doesn't is outstanding ray tracing performance while not sacrificing too much on hardware. Because a common trend with NVIDIA cards, especially up until this point, is that although they had better ray tracing performance, they sacrificed a bit when it came to the hardware because they usually lacked a lot of VRAM. And this is the first graphics card in NVIDIA's entire RTX 4000 lineup that doesn't slack on VRAM for its price. This does come with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, but for about $800, that's perfectly acceptable and you're getting really excellent ray tracing performance that can also double up for AI, 3D modeling, because this has CUDA cores. And again, this is also a 4K gaming graphics card. And if you throw in DLSS into the mix, it's a guaranteed 4K gaming graphics card. I know some of you guys may disagree with me, but this is a 4K gaming graphics card thanks to DLSS. I'll leave it at that. And this is going to be pretty much a carbon copy of my recently released $1,800 gaming PC that I just released on the channel. And again, I have a fully built out PC build list on pcbuilds.gg if you want something that's a bit more simple that you can follow. But now for the big kahuna. 
All right, so um, this next CPU and GPU combo is insane. It is insane. You need a lot of money for this, and boy, you better be satisfied because this is the fastest you can get right now. Ryzen 7 9800X 3D for $480. This is the fastest gaming CPU on the market, period. Even if it's eight cores, check it for yourself, check up benchmarks, it beats out 12 and 16 core CPUs similar to this, but again, in an eight core layout. Why is that the case? That is because this has X3D V cache, and this is AMD's only Ryzen 9000 CPU with X3D V cache. It is blazingly fast, for a reason. I will not elaborate anymore. It is the fastest gaming CPU on the market. Intel is objectively not worth considering whatsoever. Pair that up with, um, honestly, you can choose any X870 motherboard you want. If you got this amount of money, choose whichever one you want. You can go with an X870E Tai Chi. You can go with like a regular um, X870 motherboard, you know, like this one from Gigabyte. It really doesn't matter. Anything beyond this point is just diminishing returns. And for the RAM as well, um, if you wanted to go a bit overkill, you can get yourself 32 gigabytes of 7600 megahertz cast latency 36 ram that will work with these x870 motherboards and 9000 series cpus for even more performance but then for the gpu you've got options right now so you've got two you've got either the nvidia geforce rtx 4080 Super, this guy right here, which is costing about $1,000 right now, but could go down to about 900 come Black Friday and Cyber Monday. If you're more focused on ray tracing, AI, 3D modeling, and things other than gaming, but you still wanna be a gamer, and you don't wanna wait for the potentially really expensive next RTX 50A or 5090, then I, actually think it would be worth looking at getting a 4080 Super. Rumors right now are suggesting that the RTX 5080 could come with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which would be no better than this graphics card right here. So unless there's a truly sizable generational leap in performance versus the 4080 Super from the 5080, it might be worth picking up a discounted 4080 Super now on Black Friday and Cyber Monday, rather than waiting out for something that may not deliver in terms of hardware and could be out of stock for a while. Cause you know, scalpers are gonna go after those RTX 5000 cards like mad. So there's option number one, but for option number two, and this one's going out with a bang, Radeon RX 7900 XTX. Yep, also according to rumors, Radeon is probably not going to produce a high-end flagship graphics card for their RX 8000 series, meaning this is it. This is the top dog, the top pony. This is the one that AMD created to go head to get it against the 4090. And you can get one right now for $850. And I know come Black Friday and Cyber Monday, this thing is going down to below $800. And simply put in this tier, it is going to deliver the most hardware for the money, 24 gigabytes of VRAM, a ton of raw horsepower for the money, in some cases more than the RTX 4090 it was made to go up against, all at a price cheaper than the RTX 4080 Super. This is it, this is Radeon's flagship graphics card. They are not gonna make a graphics card like this again for a while, so if you want absolute raw performance, you don't care much about ray tracing, this is it. And that'll be ideal for a $2,200 PC build, which I do have up on PC builds.gg. And I will be making that into a full on PC build video next month. But I've got one more tier to show you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, if you believe the rumors, this next CPU and GPU combos for you. This is what I like to call the Max Verstappen combo. If you just want absolute performance, and by God, you don't care how much money you spend, you don't care how long you gotta wait, you just have to get the most performance because, I don't know, maybe there's an inferiority complex in your brain and you're like, the objective performance of my computer is a measurement of how good I am of a person. I know that sounds messed up, but I mean, I'm trying to justify the ways and why you want to spend this much on a combo, but get what I just recommended, including the 9800X3D, and go ahead, wait for that RTX 5090. I double dog dare you, because there's maybe a 18% chance you'll be able to do that at MSRP. Because I'm letting you know, scalpers are gonna hold up that graphics card for at least four months. And then it's gonna be another eight months until that graphics card 
starts coming down in price to match its MSRP that it was announced for when it eventually gets announced in January for CES. So have fun trying to get that 5090. But I mean, if you wanna buy one from a scalper for like, I don't know, $3,500, then sure, that's what the Max for Sapping combo is for. You've got unlimited budget, you want maximum performance, but that is it. All right, so that's my CPU and GPU combos video for 2024. If you enjoyed this, Give it a like, because you've made it to this point in the video, you stuck with me telling you to do this, and uh, also subscribe, because I make combo videos like probably twice a year, but I make other useful videos you might want to watch too. So with all of that said, thank you so much for watching, and this is the Skyterball channel, signing out.